911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, and I am joined with a very distracting Mr. Baby Clint <laughs> Officer Walton. How are you, babe? <laughs> I'm good. I'm not trying to be distracting. I'm just trying to focus. You're sitting here and I look over and you're like flailing your nostrils and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I got a sniffy nose and I'm trying not to sniff on the microphone. Poor guy. A few weeks ago, Clint, you and I talked about whether or not your job as an officer is ruining your relationships. And in that episode, this was episode number 349, we, we talked about the intimate relationship with your spouse, with your partner, the person you might be married to. And in today's episode, I thought we can revisit that episode and we could talk about how or whether or not police work is affecting relationships with family and friends. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now... Clint, we can say with without a doubt, absolutely, you, and then I can say this as a spouse, you as an officer has impacted our relationships with people that are in our, our outside circle, outside of our kingdom. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's absolutely true. It's something that you reformat your way of thinking and it doesn't always align with everybody else's and they don't necessarily agree with you or there's a fear almost I think that of whatever they're doing in their personal lives or or my own standpoints and our own standpoints of how we approach situations where they don't necessarily want to be around us because I mean I'm kind of sick and twisted in a lot of ways and I say that in the best of ways but a lot of people don't get our humor and I think that has a big factor to do with it. I think the biggest part is knowing that when somebody takes an oath like you have as a police officer then there's this understanding that there's this lifestyle that you stand by. There's this unwritten rule book that we live by, and it's not something that is secretive. And in saying that, what comes to mind for me is, you know, I have people in my family, I have brothers who have lifestyles that are much different than ours. And when I say that, I'm talking about things like recreational activities, substance abuse, illegal activity, in trouble with the law. And maybe you, as you listen to this, if you are a police officer or you are in a relationship with a police officer, you too might have people in your life that perhaps you've had to distance yourself from because of this particular line of work. And I I, I do want to say that there is still this existence and this level of respect. I, I see the media portraying this lack of respect for police officers, but I truly believe that when it comes to the reality in what I've seen day to day, I can take my brother, for example, and he, he is a he has a criminal history, we'll say. But Clint, he's always been super, super respectful towards you, towards us, towards your profession. And the same is true with even my little brother, who has had some some troubles with the law and, and you know, again, different different lifestyle than you and I live. But the respect level is, is still there. And I do want to point that out because as I'm as I'm saying this out loud, that same level of respect, even though you and I as a unit or even individually might have distanced ourselves or they've distanced themselves from us with these particular relationships, the level of respect is still existing in all of those relationships. Yeah. And, and as you're saying that I, I feel it's a mutual respect in, in the relationship. It's not something that I've kind of imposed upon them of, Oh, you're fucked up and you shouldn't be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that. It's more of a, We're still family and you don't do this shit around me and I'm not going to arrest your ass. (laughs) (laughs) Or or try to point out like all the negative shit that that you could because you're a police officer. Yeah, I'm not going to sit there and judge them based off of that. We distance ourselves. They distance themselves. But when it comes down to those family gatherings where we're all around one another, we don't speak on it. And let's talk about that for for a second, because you mentioned family gatherings. And what's coming up for me is even the family gatherings with your family. Now, your family is much different because you have, you know, a brother and a dad who they worked in and work in corrections. And, you know, although they don't have the similar 
alternative lifestyles that my brothers do, there has still been this level of disconnect within that family unit. And I think a, a lot of that has to come down with how we've changed and evolved as a couple and kind of the security buffer that we've created Uh, you know, within ourselves to where when it comes time for us to go and do something together, which isn't a lot, right? We don't get tons of time together to be able to go and do things together because of our schedules being so different. But when we do get to go and do those things, it's always on our schedule. And we no longer articulate what we do based on what someone else, especially in the family unit, tells us that we need to do. Yeah. And it's very important. And you know, it took time for especially me to realize that and to come to this understanding of our family unit comes first and then everything else is subsidiary. And a lot of people don't like that. Like Mm -hmm. they find this route of, well, you're not willing to bend over backwards for me. So that means you just don't want to be around me. You don't want to be part of this family anymore. When that's not necessarily the case at all. It's just more so of, Figuring out the importance of your own schedule and what you want to walk away with it. Yeah, and I think that because of how little time you and I do get together, when it comes time to having that time, we really ask ourselves, like, okay, would we rather go and do something just the two of us or would we rather go and sit in an environment? And not to say, like, family isn't important, so I don't want this to come across as an incorrect way, but I'm sure as you listen to this, you have some some empathy and some understanding and have been in that place before where instead of being in an environment where there's kids and screaming and barbecue and just commotion and all of these things, I know for me personally, a majority of the time, I would much rather you and I just go and do something just the two of us where we we are not subjected and we are not held accountable to anybody else in terms of time and attendance and length of time, how long you need to stay and, you know, all of the things. And and that's important because even if we go out to one of those family gatherings, it's and we make that decision to do it, we're still roped in. OK, well, we get to that point of after a few hours, we're like, OK, I'm done with this now. Let's leave. Now, once again, we're the bad people because we don't want to be around it or we didn't stay enough time or we didn't put forth that effort that other people feel we need to meet when there's no truth behind it is we're there we wanted to be there but there's a that line in the sand that we drew saying we're done with it now yeah and some people might take offense to what i'm about to say and i'm completely okay with that because i know that the people that are not going to take offense are the ones who truly understand what i'm about to say and when you live this type of lifestyle We have what I would deem to be an elite lifestyle. Clint and I wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Who do you know that works out at 3.30 in the morning? Who do you know that goes to bed by 7.30 p.m.? And that in and of itself, not even including all of the other things that take place during those waking hours, they make us very much different than what would be considered the typical lifestyle of most people. And that's that's the most important thing is just because we're not aligning aligning with everybody else, we're different. We're the outcasts mm-hmm. in so many ways. But it's it's finding that balance of well, we're not outcasts. They're they've ostracized us in so many ways. And but it's it's finding people who align with your own objectives and align with what you want in life and your approaches to things to where they have that understanding. Yeah, and I think that's such a great point because I'm thinking and there there are this grand handful of people that come to mind that I know that I can actually text message at three o'clock in the morning. People that I know are, are in the same, and, and not to say everybody has to wake up at three in the morning. I'm just saying what, what Clint made mention of is finding people that are in that same alignment. It's not likely that somebody is going to invite us over to their house to have a birthday party for their kids or whatever the thing is, and then understand when we say, hey, we got to take off at five o'clock. I know we just got here at four, but we have an hour and a half drive to go home before we need to go to bed so that we can you know, start on this whole thing all over again. Yeah, and that's important to us. And we've determined that's important to us. So we want to continue that. And and that's where that social norm becomes that moment in time where we are looked at as those outcasts because we do this out of the ordinary and that's okay for us, but it's not okay for them. So it's just like 
me saying to them, well, you're staying up till one o'clock in the morning and you choose to do that. Great. More power to you. But I'm getting ready to wake up in a couple <laughs> hours, you know, so I that that is physically draining towards us because we've been in this state of repetition of waking up so early and and our routine with that and it works for us doesn't mean it works for everybody but it works for us so we continue that yeah so in summary then whether or not police work is ruining your relationships with your family and your friends it very well might be however i would ask you to truly consider what it is that you want for yourself before considering the opinions the thoughts and the requests of other people and if you need permission if you feel like it's deemed appropriate for me to give you the permission that you need in order for you to be able to tell other people no and to put that elite lifestyle, whatever that elite lifestyle is for you, frame it that way and know that the way that you're operating is going to be different than everybody that you're around and that is okay. I hope that you guys are having an amazing day today. Know that we are sending you a long, tight hug from our home to yours. And if you've gotten any value out of this episode, please do us a favor, subscribe, drop a review down below, and as always, have an incredible, incredible day.